Hey guys, this is Mrs. Arvin, and this is section 6.7 on polynomial equations. We have been working with polynomials all throughout this chapter. We have talked about quadratic functions. We have learned how to put quadratic functions into vertex form and graph the resulting parabolas. We've talked about zeros and inequalities, and we've also looked at um, some modeling with quadratic functions. We've talked about dividing polynomials by monomials. We've looked at long division and synthetic division. And then last class, we talked about three really important theorems with factoring polynomials, the remainder theorem, the factor theorem, and the rational root theorem. Uh, just as a quick reminder, the remainder theorem basically says that I can either plug in a number and evaluate it, or I can use division to divide by that number. Uh, and the remainder that I get when I divide it's going to be the same thing as if I plug it in and chug it in. Uh, or the number that I get when I plug and chug will be the same as when I divide. That's our remainder theorem. The factor theorem says that if I plug and chug and get a zero, that means that number is a factor. Or if I divide by a number and get a remainder of zero, that proves it's a factor. And that third theorem, the rational root theorem, we look at all the factors of our constant term uh, divided by all the factors of our leading coefficient, c over d, to determine all the possible rational roots. And that gives us a place to get started when we are trying to factor polynomials. Let's do a uh, quick review here to get started. Let's solve 4x minus 5 equals 0. So as a quick reminder, we have a linear function here. It's set equal to 0, and the way that we would solve 4x is by adding 5 to both sides and then dividing by 4, and hopefully you get that x is equal to 5 fourths. When we solve a quadratic equation like we have here, x squared plus 5x minus 2, we can solve that by factoring, and if factoring doesn't work, then we have to go to the quadratic formula. Uh, and when we are thinking about factoring, remember that we're thinking of we're trying to find factors that when multiplied equals a times c, but when added equals b. So our a times c is negative 2, and our b term is a positive 5, and unfortunately there are no uh, factors of negative 2 that when added equal positive 5, so we would have to use the quadratic formula, the negative b plus or minus square root of b squared, you know the rest of it. And when we do plug in those numbers, we get negative 5 plus or minus square root of 33 over 2 as our values of x there. We do have two values in a quadratic. Now let's review how to write uh, an equation in standard form with these roots. x is equal to negative 6, or x is equal to 13. Well, if x is equal to negative 6, then we could say that x plus 6 is 0. That's one of our roots. Or x minus 13. That's another one of our roots, or another one of our zeros. And if we're working our way backward to our original equation, we would then multiply x plus 6 times x minus 13, set equal to 0 because of our zero product property law. We would then FOIL and get x squared minus 7x minus 78 equals 0. This is in standard form. Don't forget, standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, standard form for our quadratics. So we can also work our way backwards from the known factors to derive the original equation. All right, today our lesson objective is this. The student will solve polynomial equations using the zero product property, which we've been using this whole entire class, and will also determine the number of complex roots of a polynomial equation. Now, We've actually talked about this uh, quite a bit already throughout this chapter, so you're going to hear some information that's going to be presented as new, but I've already mentioned in a class before, so hopefully it's not super new. Hopefully you hear some things and go, oh yeah, she told us that in class. But we're going to look at solving polynomial equations today, which means we're going to find our value of x, and when we find our value of x, we're really finding our roots or our zeros or our factors. Roots, zeros, factors, same things. Right now, many polynomial equations can be solved by writing the equation in its general form, p of x equals 0, just like we did with quadratics, and factoring the polynomial, just like we've done previously, and applying the zero product property. That Remember, the zero product property says that if a times b equals 0, then a must be equal to 0 or b must be equal to 0. Or they could both be equal to 0, so we would set our two factors equal to zero. That's the zero product property. So let's start with an easier one. 3x cubed minus x squared plus 27x minus 9 equals zero. 
So the first thing that we're going to do is see if there's any monomial, anything that all of these can be divided by. Now, our first term and our third term and our final term could all be divided by 3, but unfortunately that second term does not have a 3 to factor out. Our first, second, and third term also could all be divided by the monomial x, but unfortunately this last term does not have a monomial, so there's no monomial that we can factor out. However, we do have four terms, so let's see if we can factor by grouping. We're going to take a look at these first two, and we see that we can take an x squared. I divide both of these terms by the monomial x squared. Remember, factoring is just dividing. And when we factor out an x squared, we're left with 3x minus 1 in our first group. And then in our second group, 27x minus 9, we can factor out or divide by the monomial 9. So we'll divide each of these by the monomial 9, and there it is, a positive 9. And when we take 27x divided by 9, we get 3x, and negative 9 divided by negative. Uh, by positive 9 is negative 1. So we have factored by grouping here, and we're left with 3x minus 1 and x squared plus 9 equals 0. But we haven't finished solving for x yet. Now we need to apply the zero product property and solve for our possible x's. So we'll set 3x minus 1 equals uh, 3x minus 1 equal to 0, or x squared plus 9 equal to 0, and we'll solve both of those. When we solve for the one on the left, we get that x equals one-third, or x squared equals plus or minus 3i. Remember that we've got to take roots here. Square root of x squared is x, and the square root of negative 9 is plus or minus 3i. Because of prime factorization, we get negative 9 is the same as 3 squared times negative 1. And we can split that. The square root of 3 squared is just plus or minus 3. And the square root of negative 1 is i. So we've ended up with three factors here. And you've heard me mention this already. Okay, the degree of our polynomial indicates the maximum number of factors that we can have. So in an x cubed polynomial, we have a, a maximum of three factors. And you see we have 1, 2, 3. Right, but what about when our polynomial uh, maybe isn't quite as easy to factor? The first thing that we're going to do is take our polynomial and set that equal to 0. We'll write it in general form. So we have x cubed minus 5x plus 2 equals 0. You'll notice that we don't have an x squared term. So I would actually rewrite that uh, to make sure that I have an x squared term. Write 0x squared minus 5x plus 2. And I would do that because when I am trying to find the first factor through synthetic or long division, I do need that x squared term in there. So let's go ahead and just write it in there right now. We're then going to use our rational root theorem here to determine all the possible roots. Okay, remember our possible rational roots are all of our factors of c over all of our factors of d, our constant over our leading coefficient. And the factors of c are plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 2. And the factors of our leading coefficient, which is just 1, is plus or minus 1. So we have four possible rational roots. Positive 1, negative 1, positive 2, negative 2. And in order to determine if those are roots, I can use a couple of different methods. Going back to 6.6, .6, I can plug and chug. So if I plug and chug a positive 1, if I get a 0, that means it's a root. Or if I plug and chug a negative 1 or positive 2 or negative 2, I could use synthetic division, so I could divide this very quickly, synthetically, uh, remembering to use that 0 for my x squared term. So I would have 1, 0, negative 5, and 2. So I could try synthetic division, and remember if I get a 0 remainder, that's also a root. Now if I do that with a positive 1, uh, I'm going to get a negative 2 remainder. So positive 1, not a root. When I divide by negative 1 or plug and chug with negative 1, I get a remainder of 6. Negative 1 is not a root. However, when I get to number 2, positive 2, I either plug and chug or divide by positive 2, I do get a remainder of 0, so 2 is a root. Therefore, x minus 2 is how we would write our factor. Let's go ahead and use some synthetic division to find our depressed polynomial here. Okay, again, don't forget, I've got to have that x squared term. I wrote that on the first screen here. I had uh, x cubed plus 0x squared. I've got to have that placeholder there. 5x plus 2. I write my coefficients and I divide synthetically. So bring down the 1, multiply by 2, and add. 0 plus 2 is 2. Multiply again, 
2 times 2 is 4, and add. And then multiply again. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, and add. So I get a remainder of 0. Remember, this last number is my remainder. This is now my constant. This is now my x term. And this is now my x squared term. Dividing got rid of that x cubed term. So our depressed polynomial is x squared plus 2x minus 1 times our original factor that we found here, x minus 2. So all of that is equal to 0. Now that I have my depressed polynomial, I can try to factor that to find the remaining factors. Uh, unfortunately, x squared plus 2x minus 1 doesn't factor. This quadratic is not factorable, so we do have to use the quadratic formula. And when I do that, I get negative 1 plus or minus square root of 2. If you want to see this uh, problem worked out in its entirety, you can take a look at page 267, and you'll see the quadratic formula listed there, and you'll see the a, b, and c terms plugged into the quadratic formula to arrive at this answer. Okay, as you can see, I have 1 and then 2, 3. Three roots, and it was an x cubed function. The degree of my polynomial was 3, and I've got 3 roots. This leads us to our fundamental theorem of calculus. Now, not calculus, sorry, fundamental theorem of algebra. Now, I am going to read the book definition for you, and then I'm going to put it in some simple terms or layman's terms here. Our fundamental theorem of algebra says that every polynomial equation of positive degree n has exactly n complex roots, including multiple roots. In layman's terms, what it's it is what I've been saying this whole time. If the degree of my polynomial is 3, I've got 3 roots. If the degree of my polynomial is 5, I've got 5 complex roots. If the degree of my polynomial is 1, I've got 1 complex roots. Now that can include multiple roots. So it is possible for all 3 roots to be exactly the same. Or in x equals 5, for example, I could have 3 different roots and maybe some of those roots are repeated. <coughs> But every polynomial equation with a positive degree, whatever this number is that has to be positive, has exactly that number of complex roots, including multiple roots. The n, n just stands for number, the number of complex roots may be real or imaginary numbers, as we've seen already, we've had some imaginary numbers today. And a polynomial, p of x, can be written as the product of a constant, k, and n linear factors of the form x minus a. All right, basically what that means is that when I want to write my polynomial, I can write it as a product of my factors. So you've already seen that, that I can write p of x, for example. I might want to write it as x plus 3 and x minus 2. I can write it that way. Or in our previous example, we had x equals negative 2, so I could write that as or x equals 2, so x minus 2. And then we have complex numbers here, so I could write that as x, uh, x minus negative 1 plus the square root of 2. And I'll put it right there, x minus negative 1 minus the square root of 2. So I could list all of those out in parenthetical form in this form of x minus whatever our factor was. Okay, that's all that that definition is saying there.